Hey, I'm back with another tip for you guys. Something that doesn't get talked about a lot is float height in your carburetor. Float height is super important because it determines how much fuel is kept in your float bowl. So whenever you're doing any jetting, you definitely want to check your float height first. Too little fuel will affect your jetting as well as too much fuel. So to adjust your float height, you just bend the tab on your floats like I'll be showing you here shortly. These steps should be very similar for either a two stroke or four stroke. In this video, I'm going to pull the carburetor all the way off to access the floats. However, on some bikes, you can get to the floats by just simply twisting the carburetor while it's still on the bike. But if that's not the case on your bike, I'll just give you the full rundown here anyways. First, we're going to remove the seat. It's just two bolts on either side. And then pull the gas tank strap off the tank. I've always found it a lot easier to access the carburetor by removing the subframe. It's only a few extra steps and it helps a lot, especially on four strokes since the carburetors are much bigger. So we're going to do this first by pulling the subframe bolts. Then we're going to loosen up the air boot clamp on the back side of the carburetor. If you have a four stroke, you also need to loosen up your muffler clamp. Next we're going to wiggle the subframe assembly off the bike. If your clamps are loose enough, this should slide off pretty easily. The next step isn't absolutely necessary, but it makes the job a little bit easier. You can remove the top shock bolt by lifting up on the rear wheel and the bolt will slide out much easier. Now we're going to loosen up the clamp on the front side of the carburetor and remove the fuel line. The vent hoses will also need to be freed up so the carburetor can be removed. The hoses on the rear run between the engine and the rear shock. So pulling the top shock bolt helps get to these hoses a little bit easier. Now we'll need access to the throttle assembly. Wiggle the carburetor loose from the intake boot. On this particular carburetor, there are three screws holding the throttle cap on but most two-stroke carburetors will have a threaded on cap. If you have a four-stroke with dual throttle cables, all you'll need to do is remove the cables from the throttle pulley underneath the black plastic cap. Once you've loosened up the cap, the throttle slide can come out now. If your carburetor has a throttle position sensor like this one, make sure you remove the sensor from the harness, not the carburetor. Now the carburetor can be removed from the bike. Before we open up the carburetor at all, we'll want to clean the exterior. First, we're going to remove the float bowl. So these screws strip pretty easily. You want to use lots of pressure and make sure your screwdriver fits in the screw really tightly. Once your screws are out, slide the bowl off and remove the plastic slosh guard. To check your float height, you want the float valve to be fully seated and the floats gently resting on it, but not pushing in the center pin at all. As you can see in this clip, the center pin is the one I'm pushing in. You want the floats to be gently resting on that pin. The float height is measured from the float bowl surface to the top of the floats, while the floats are gently resting on the float valve. You'll have to hold the carburetor at a certain angle to get the floats in the correct position like I described earlier. The float height for this carburetor is 7.5 millimeters, but refer to your manual since every carburetor will be different. To adjust the float height, we'll have to pull the floats off the carburetor. On this carb, there's a screw holding the pin in, but on most carburetors, you just pull the pin out from the side. To increase the float height, you'll bend the tab that the valve is hanging on down, and to decrease the float height, you'll bend it up. Repeat this process until you've achieved the correct float height. While you've got the carburetor apart, it's always a good idea to make sure your jets are clean. I'll hold each jet up to a light source to make sure the jet hole is completely clear. Now let's put the floats and valve back on the carburetor. Once your floats and valve are installed, check to make sure they're working properly. Now it's time to put the slosh guard on and reinstall the float bowl. Slide the bowl back on and install the screws. Be careful when tightening the screws of course. Before installing the carburetor back on the bike, I'd recommend wiping down the throttle slide and around the intake area. The next step is installing the throttle assembly and tightening down the screws. Once you have the throttle together, check your throttle up on the handlebars and make sure it's working properly. Also, don't forget to plug your wiring back in and install any cables such as a hot start. Now we're going to pop the carburetor back into the intake boot and install the fuel line. Be sure to tighten up the clamp as well. All the carburetor vent hoses should be routed properly before reinstalling the shock bolt or the subframe. With that finished, we can put the upper shock bolt back in and torque the nut. The specified torque for this bike is 32 foot-pounds. 
Finally, it's time to install the subframe back on the bike. The airbox boot can kind of be difficult to slide back on the carburetor. So a trick I'll use is applying a little bit of water or Windex to the inside of the boot. Lining everything up with the subframe can take a little patience sometimes. First, I'll start with the exhaust and then I'll move to the airbox boot. The key is to have the clamps really loose and wiggle the subframe into place. You definitely want to get your intake boot all the way on the carburetor or else you'll have a massive air leak. Once you've got the airbox boot all the way on the carburetor, hold it in place and tighten the clamp before you install any subframe bolts. Also, make sure your exhaust has slid into place all the way. We're ready to install the subframe bolts now. These bolts call for 22 foot-pounds. Before installing your seat, don't forget the gas tank strap. The last step, of course, is putting your seat back on. Make sure the front hook's on, as well as the tabs in the center. Then reinstall the bolts on the back. I hope you found this helpful. I just want to say I'm really appreciative for all the support I've been getting the last few weeks with putting up these videos. Keep it up. I've got lots more on the way. See ya.